All right, welcome to episode five of the Growth Podcast. Um, for the last, what, four or five weeks now, um, we've been having conversations with different kinds of people. And today, obviously, is no exception. I have a very interesting guest um, today who's going to really just entertain us and teach us a number of things. I look forward to learning from her um, and uh, having a conversation that I feel will kind of like, you know, open her up so that we can get to know her better in terms of what she's doing and also what others can learn from her. So please don't forget to like the video, subscribe and then share and tag a friend if you can. So yeah, my guest today um, needs no introduction. Muizu Kanji, welcome to the conversation. Thank you so much, Sui. I'm really happy to be here. Yeah, well, we're actually happy to have you. Mm -hmm. We're very happy I've to have you. I've been sat like this in a long time, especially where the cameras. So I'm a little bit, but I'm no, good. No, no, don't worry. You'll be very safe. Yeah. You, you, you'll be okay. You'll be okay. Uh, yeah. So first of all, Muizu uh, Kanji means what? Memory. Memory. Yes. So do you prefer Muizu Kanji or Muizu? A reminder of something. Muizu Kanji. Muizu or also, Kanji. Muizu or Kanji. Yes. Interesting. Mm -hmm. My name is Sui Lanji. It means faith. Uh, I like Sui, but I never have Lanji. Like the Lanji just never, you know, happens for me. And you're from Isoka as well, because yeah. I'm, I'm from Isoka. From Isoka. What village is on, 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 on your NRC? Uh, <laughs> Kaombwe. Kaombwe. Kaombwe village, yes. Ah, okay. Mine is, mine is Lupita. No, mine is Kaombwe. And your chief is who? Uh, chief Kafwimbi. Ah, uh, no. You don't know. Uh, Such questions not, don't just come all the chief. time. And then now you look down. <laughs> What's the name of my chief? I've never been there. No, <laughs> no. but but ask the mongers. Funny thing is, we have no traditional ceremony. I see Lozis, you know, making noise about the ceremony. The guys with their anchuala, the guys with their umutomboko and whatnot. Us, we just watch. I think we're just too busy with our businesses. So maybe, <laughs> you know, people from this side are always, uh, you know, they're always in the field, they're always in the markets, they're always everywhere. So I think people like you need to start pushing the agenda. We should, oh, okay, let's meet as Namwangas and plan for our ceremony. I think no, it'll be a good thing. Maybe the ceremony is there. We're just embarrassing ourselves because we just don't know. No, it <laughs> is. But even if it were, it's so not really. Famous. Yes, it's not famous. It's supposed to be famous. Yeah, with your followers, I'm sure you can make it famous. So <laughs> now let's get into our conversation. <laughs> okay. Muizu Kanji, tell me about your life growing up. Where'd you grow up? How was it for you? Mm, okay. I was born in Chawama. Chawama. Yes. Okay. The company that makes presidents. <laughs> yeah, so watch out for <laughs> You're me. You're on the way. <laughs> I'm, on my, I'm, I'm just, uh, you know, backing myself a bit of some gemas on here and there, but we're getting there. So I was born in Chawama. Yeah. Uh, a few decades ago. I'm 29, soon to be 30. Uh, I moved from Chawama. I, I can't say I moved, my family moved. Because my parents divorced, my mother went to work in uh, Kafue, so I went with my mom. And uh, uh, life started from there. So growing up, I started uh, school from Kafue till grade uh, 11. Then I moved. I went to Lusaka. Am I even supposed to say I went to Lusaka? I came to Lusaka because we're in Lusaka. I came to Lusaka and um, from there I relocated. I went to um, Kushi, from Kushi to Luansha, Luansha. I went to South Africa for a bit and then came back to Zambia. But um, growing up as a child, uh, I was so excited because I wanted to become a truck driver. I was, you know. I felt really nice when I saw how much money truck drivers were making. Maybe I was just misinformed because I'm not seeing them making as much as they used to. <laughs> <laughs> and if I'd followed that dream, I don't know where I was yeah, going to be, this. but yeah. So, you know, dreams changed along the way. Uh, in between growing up and being a grown up, I got pregnant when I was not so grown up. So I got pregnant when I was a teen. And um, I was in grade 12 then. So because I, I got pregnant when I was that young, no, not really young, but then, you know, I, I knew uh, very few things about life. There was um, not much that I knew about life. So I got pregnant. Fast forward, I felt my grade 12 with flying colors. That's why I don't find the GCE jokes funny, by the way. Okay. Because I've been through that road. I felt I got pregnant and um, I was uh, still a teen then. I got married. 
uh, tough decisions. Family was not really for the idea, but yeah, I got I got married. I went off. You know this teenage love affair. You know you feel like this guy is the one. Yeah, love we. You know everything is just revolving around that person, and then you are seeing to my children. You know that future where now you don't want to think about uh, what I want to become, how I'm going to be, what I want to be. But the only thing that you're seeing is um, you know love. Someone telling you they love you and you're comfortable with that and you put your life on hold. So fast forward, that was me. And I entered uh, into a marriage when I was quite young. I had my daughter. Uh, later on, um, I moved from Lusaka. I went to Mukushi. That's why I stayed as a married woman. I don't know if I was a married woman or a married girl. <laughs> but then I went, I went there. And um, I think at that point... I really didn't even have dreams of my own because now I was just seeing myself, you know, I just wake up, you cook, you know, you are this person's wife, you are comfortable in that space. This person is providing, you're okay, and everything is just going on well. So uh, I put my dreams on hold. Remember that Abamanje Nishi, GCE was calling, but I had not made the decision to, you know, receipt. But that was my life as a married person. I went, I was in the marriage. Fast forward, I had another child when I was uh, in Mkushi. That was 2013 when my son was born. This time it was a baby boy. My first child was a girl, a very beautiful, tall girl who looks almost like me now. So um, having been in those, uh, you know, situations, you experience what marriage is like, you know, being a child, you're not so mature, but then you're married. I understood a lot of things and I got a lot of lessons. That marriage felt, but before that marriage uh, felt, I went and um, I sat for GCE. So, you know, one was pushing out, you know, because you're experiencing life, you're seeing what's happening, you're seeing what, how society can be if you don't have uh, a paper, you know. So I started, that process started anyway. Why? Because now I was talking to people, I was seeing what was happening in other people's lives and I, I just convinced myself to say, I think I really need to take this route. And I'm glad that I got support from family, I got support from the friends that I had then. I went back, Kunkala grade, um, grade 12, I cleared, lucky enough. So I cleared, I pushed, I went into college, I was in, uh, in Wansha. So I went into college. Unfortunately, the marriage failed for some reasons that I really don't like to discuss because that part of my life is not in the public. But the marriage failed. So from that experience for me, I picked up a lot of lessons, a lot of lessons that even now I can sit and share with someone. I can tell someone what it is like to be in a marriage and not be able to stand up for yourself. I can tell someone what it is like to be in a marriage and you are depending on someone to provide for everything that you need. So now my story is about, you know, encouraging another woman, encouraging another girl that regardless of the situations that you've been through, because I've seen people that have gotten pregnant when they are maybe in college, people have gotten pregnant when they are in grade nine. People got pregnant maybe when they were in grade 12 and they just give up. They feel, okay, I think at this point I can't do anything. Or maybe people that just get so comfortable and say, okay, for me, I think I can get into a marriage and everything just, you know, goes like that. I'm not saying marriage is a bad thing. Marriage is a beautiful thing. Even when we're growing up, we're like, okay, I want to get married at 25. I want to have my own house at 26. I want to, you know, have so many kids at 27. You know, we, we all have those dreams. Marriage is a beautiful thing. But in as much as you're going to go into that marriage, you have to work on yourself. You have to build yourself. And you have to be in a position where you're able to stand up for yourself. My childhood is not very much um, interesting, but I got a lot of lessons from there. Interesting. You sound very wise, eh? Ah, I'm Namwanga. <laughs> How would you expect? Yeah, Namwanga wisdom. Yes. Namwanga I'm wisdom. Namwanga. Yeah. And your so, last yeah. name is Nakamba, by the way, right? Yes, I'm Nakamba. Nakamba. Mm -hmm. Your mm -hmm. brother's a Siame. Yes. All right. Uh, last time I was telling you that I actually want to see if I can make my, if, if, if God gives me a girl, I want to make her a Siame, you know? No, don't. I kind of like... It's better if they use both. Maybe they use yeah. Nakamba Siame or Siame Nakamba. Okay, yeah. That's, that's yeah. actually a good idea. That's that actually a good idea. Better. Okay, so now... 
you're done with your GCE, you go to college. What did you do at college? I have a, a degree in business studies with education. Yeah. Something that has... Um, I haven't really... Um, because I can teach. I'm a teacher. But I haven't really gone that route. So I can't say it's a bad thing that I got that paper because that paper has, has really helped me understand a lot of things in society. So it's a, it's a Bachelor of Business Studies with education. Yep. Okay. And, and, and now, obviously, you, you've gone through all of that. Um, childhood is obviously now behind us. You're, mm -hmm. you're done with your education. Um, how was it like or how has it been like for you raising your children because you mentioned that first one was a girl then the boy how has it been raising children and right now i'm saying that because we are living in an era where social media can literally damage a child like a, a child can literally be a good boy what and what but then mm -hmm. social media friends at school whatever the friends are exposed to your children are exposed to that how has it been like you for you raising children as a single parent okay so i have um standards for myself i have standards for my kids and uh, in as much as the world is going to be harsh you know children can learn things out there but when they come home i have got specific rules i've got specific ways on how a child is supposed to behave in my house what they're supposed to do what they are not supposed to do and i strongly feel that i'm doing the right thing because my children are well behaved i flock sometimes <laughs> if i have to <laughs> is it, is it, is if it, is i have it? to i flock is there, is there anything that, like from memory, when you just look back, mm -hmm. that like a proud moment, that you, something you, your kid did that made you proud when you look back? A lot of things. Like what's the one thing that really stands out? Okay, now I've got four kids. And uh, these four kids are doing different things. And um, I think one striking moment was um, when the matron for... Uh, the school where my son is, sent me this video and um, my son was in church. He's an Adventist now. Even today, I just picked him from school. I was telling me, oh, okay, I'm an adventurer. This is what I do, ABCD. So they sent me a clip and he was in church. He was, uh, you know, he was um, doing his presentations and I was not there. But when I watched, I was really proud. He is so good when it comes to singing. Okay. So the Advent hymns, he's very, very good. That's, um, that's my son. He does a lot of things that make me proud. And um, I remember the last time I had a conversation with my daughter, my first daughter, when uh, my dad died. You know, we sat, I think a few days, a few days after we buried. She started explaining to me what happens when someone dies. And I was like, okay, where did she get all that from? So I was comforted by this not so old child, but a little girl who I, who I feel understands death, understands life much more than I do. So there are a lot of things that my kids do that I look at them and I'm just so proud as a mother. I'm just so proud. I can't take the credit for everything that my kids are today because um, I have got a uh, family that is also helping me raise the kids. You know, they say it takes the whole village to yeah. raise the kids. Yeah. So a lot that my kids are doing that I'm just looking and saying, okay, this is God. This is good. This is family. This is me. But at the end of the day, I just look at them and I'm so proud. Okay. Are you yeah. able to tell at the ages mm. what they want to become like in the future? I don't want to impose on what they no, but should. Based on their on, yes. What I, they should or should not be. But at one time we had this conversation. Um, my son said he wanted to be a soldier. And my daughter said, ah, they're going to shoot you and you'll die. <laughs> <laughs> so from that time, like he just changed his mind. Now I hear he wants to be an engineer because my young brother is now an engineer. So for me, I feel um, what you expose your child to is what they're going to absorb. And that's what they're going, you know. If you're going to expose them to people that are doing nothing, people that ha don't have dreams for themselves, it's very difficult for, ch for a child to look and be motivated. But I think they are around people that are shaping them very well. And uh, I'm hearing some want to be engineers, some want to be doctors. 
But then my daughter was asking me, can I buy a car if I'm a doctor? So I said, yes, you can. Ah, okay, can I buy a house if I'm a doctor? Said, yes, you can. So they want to be, my, my daughter wants to be a nurse. I have got four kids, by the way. The team is big now, they are four. So my eldest daughter is 18 and uh, she wants to be a nurse. For her, she just wants to be a nurse. My other daughter wants to be a doctor. The other one wants to be an engineer. The smallest one. I just see her dancing around. We have not really had a conversation <laughs> on what she wants to be. Yeah, but an idea, when least. she just sees, hears, uh, you know, music, she, she'll be there, she'll be dancing. But, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then, okay, now, now, then the Muzokanji that we know now, like, blossomed. Like, mm -hmm. then you came on the scene. Um, how, did you ever imagine that you'd be famous? No. This famous, no. But, um... Growing up, I was always a troublemaker, so a lot of people knew me for misbehaving. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I would beat up people. I would uh, go to the road. Uh, I would go to the road. I used to play with boys. So sometimes we'd beat up people. The reports would come. So I was famous for such things. Even in school, I was uh, actively involved in politics. So I was known for, uh, for that. And um, when I was in school... Uh, I got a job, by the way. My first job was when I was in college. So a lot of people knew me from that. But this famous, I didn't imagine that I was going to be like this. Because sometimes I get scared. I have been to Chadiza. I have been to Lundazi. And you just find people that will say, Oh, Mwizu! You know, been to Livingston. I've been to Kasumbalesa. I've been to Kitwe, different parts of the country. And you just find people that are going to, Oh, okay, that's Mwizu. So sometimes it scares me because it's something I didn't plan. But here we are. Okay. Mm -hmm. And and when did it hit you? Like, okay, wait, I'm actually famous. Ah, hitting? Uh, 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 uh. There was no I moment. Don't even, there was no moment where it hit me because the moment that uh, um, maybe that was supposed to hit was when I was being bullied. So for me, it was like when you just go online... You find people are talking, oh, this ugly girl. No, she's the most ugly. They'll get your pictures. They'll be talking. So I think that was a point. The negative energy was everywhere. My face was everywhere. People, at some point, I was even crowned the, the ugliest girl, you know? These, these pictures, when people post pictures and then they, 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 they vote and then they say, oh, okay, the ugliest girl is this one. So for me, that, at, that, at that point, I thought, okay, People were talking about me. Everyone was mentioning Mizukanji. Almost everyone had an opinion on what was happening. So I think that was a point it hit to say, okay, I think. Yeah, you don't look ugly to me. Um, so how did you deal with that? Because I can imagine the, the cyber bullying, all of that. How did you deal with that? Okay, I'm not going to sit here and um, just say it was something easy. I'll be lying. It was a very difficult uh, uh, phase in my life. Um, I needed family. I needed close friends just to be with me, you know. And um, I'm glad that we overcame. Uh, it was at that point that I even became suicidal, you know. I was almost giving up. Not because I wanted to, but because of the energy that I was getting, you know, the bullying that was going on. And um, a number of people were just trying to make it worse. Because it was a topic every day, every day. When you just log into Facebook, you just find this is happening. People are talking. When you just move, you know, even when you're not on Facebook, you just find people, oh, dear Ucha. you know, everyone is pointing fingers. It was not easy. But I'm glad that we overcame. And I know there are a number of people that are going through different situations that they feel, okay, this is just the end of me. This is not making sense, you know? You feel like giving up? The only thing that you need to do is find the right company, find the right people, associate yourself with the right people. And that is, um, it's really, really going to help you overcome. The thing I admired about you um, is with all of this, like you said, you're coming from a point where you're suicidal and then now you've rebuilt yourself and like you've come out of all of that, you've dealt with all of that. 
and now you're here because obviously looking at you now you don't look like you're suicidal you look like where you still I have a future life, you yeah? know yeah you look <laughs> like you still have you know a life ahead of you mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and 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 you dealt with that and now you're here talk me through your hustle okay like because the first i think my first encounter with you on social media was the t-shirts mm-hmm, you know mm-hmm. the hustle yeah. the hustle t-shirts and whatnot mm-hmm. talk me through that what what exactly do you do um you work, you run businesses. Last time you were telling me you've got, what, five cars or something. You know, very inspiration. Talk me through that. Okay, so, you know, whatever is going to come to you, whatever is happening, you have to survive. You know, you have to, as long as you're breathing, you have to eat. If you have to eat, you have to buy. If you have to buy, you must have money. And how are you going to have that money? Find ways of, you know, hustling find ways of you how am i where is my next meal going to come from so um for me the point when i realized that okay i attracted um this much uh following i attracted um you know a number of people were interested in seeing what i was to be or what was happening uh i took advantage of that and just used that uh to 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 grow my business so we had we had the hustle we still have the hustle brand and um i sold and i survived from the hustle at that point because when everything else was happening i was so affected that i i felt to perform even at work and i was fired i was fired a few a few days um after everything started going on so i was so affected i couldn't reach my targets you know in a in a work environment where you're supposed to hit targets where you're supposed to make sales where you're supposed to and i was not able to do that because i was not in my right mind and that's something that people also need to understand that mental health can actually affect not just it can affect everything around you and if not handled properly it can even be the end of you so I was so affected to a point where I lost my job. I didn't know how I was going to survive. I had kids that I had to provide for. You know, I had a lot that was happening. I had rentals. I had a lot that was happening. And I lost my job. So the only plan B that I had then, do or die. Okay? If you don't sell, you don't survive. If you don't, if you don't sell, and I hate handouts. If you don't sell, I was not going to stand for myself. So I used the I used that for me uh to grow my business. I used it, you know, people are going to be looking at you. As they are looking at you, they are able to buy, they're able to see what you're selling, they're able to see what you are offering, and that's how the journey started. It was there then, it was there before that happened, but when the numbers came and everything happened, for me it was just I, I, I outgrew the negative energy because now I knew that, okay, people are talking, but then we're, you know, we're making this money. It wasn't much, but we were surviving. So we did much. The, um, the, biggest, uh, the biggest deal that I had before now, when I was doing my t-shirts, was when I uh, went and supplied t-shirts in Petaoke. So, like, I became the main supplier for the T-shirts who were doing the printing for the campaign, you know. We provided T-shirts to quite a number of people that side. And for me, that was a plus. It really pushed me up. It really changed a lot of things in my life. And I'm also grateful to Honorable J. Banda because when he came in, a lot changed. Yeah. So, we managed to push. We managed to push. And uh, we started growing. So now there was this business we are doing, we are printing, we are also growing our own brands, we are doing boot sales, you know, we are doing deliveries in these markets, we are going to, to, to different markets and just selling. And for me, that became my life. I was not ashamed. If I wanted to, I had an option. I was just going to say, okay, life has become difficult. I can go back to my father's house and just sit, you know, relax, flex and do nothing and wait for when I was going to, you know, get another chance to work somewhere else. But I didn't want that for myself. So then we started growing. We started growing um, fast forward. I don't know which part I'm supposed to focus most on the brand. Now there's, you know, there's Muizukanji. 
um, I, I went on and registered a company that's uh, into marketing. So for some of the clients that we, we usually promote products, they are not just people that call and then say, okay, post this for me. So we've got contracts, we've got people that, and we've got rates. Yeah. So away from that, I'm also full-time employment at Jelum Zambia. And um, I also have my own vehicles on the road. I don't want to mention which ones because I don't want to promote, you know, she said this, maybe yeah. there's another <laughs> a company that wants to engage me. So yeah, there are a number of vehicles on the road. And uh, for me, it has really been, it has really been good business. Transport has really been good business for me because I know even if I'm just sleeping at home, there's some cashing that is going to come and it's a plus for me. Away from that, um, also now into cakes. So it's, it's just starting. Yeah, I saw but, the, the school. Yeah, it's just, I, I went into the school. I, I did my, my short course. And now we registered the company. And now we've, we're doing cakes. So we just employed someone. And uh, very soon, the marketing and everything is going to be on, on. We also have a saloon. Not oh, the Avocado Kids. Not we, I should say the kids. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, it has just been about looking at opportunities. You know, if I'm going to, uh, in, you know, entrepreneurship is about offering solutions. Yeah. So for me, if I, if I scan, if I do my SWOT analysis, I see, okay, this I think I can do. This I think um, w w with this opportunity that is presenting itself, I think I can kick in and do ABCD. So for me, it's just been about scanning the market. Even if I see your business, you are not taking care of it, I can grab it from you and just work on it. Mwizukanja as a brand, um, I have a standard rate that gets me, I think in a month, um, I don't want to exaggerate and I don't want to also um, give figures that are not, but if I'm going to influence a brand, I don't get less than 10,000 kwacha. So if you see me influencing brands, figures are different, but at least I don't go less than 50. When everything comes in, this pays, this pays, this pays. So it has really been um, about using opportunities. It has really been about, um, you know, being ready to take on challenges, being ready to just look at a business opportunity and then just grab it. I'm into farming as well. So I'm just starting and getting lessons from people that are, <laughs> from people that are, have been there already. So yeah. We're just trying to do a lot to survive. At the end of the day, it's about growth and it's about the money. And I love money, by the way. Who doesn't? <laughs> there are people that say they don't like money, but me, I love money. No, the difference is you love it and you can say it. Others yeah. love it and don't say it. I love, I love, <laughs> I love money. So if someone gives me, you know, if someone gives me um, something that's going to give me money, if it's legal, I think... I grab it. I grab the opportunity. So all these things that you've mentioned mm -hmm. and raising four children, the businesses you've mentioned, the businesses that you're going to grab, the businesses that are coming and what you're doing and your full-time job, how do you manage to strike a balance so that none of them suffers? The kids don't feel like mommy is not there for us. The business doesn't feel like you are half into it. The company feels like, look, Muzukanji is here for us. She's still relevant to us. And she does her part in the company. How do you stretch yourself across all of these things? You know, one simple fact. And also you're an admin for a page. <laughs> <You're>, <laughs> being an admin for a page is not a full-time job. But it's a lot of you work. Know, it's, yes, it's a lot of work. And um, especially that you also have to uh, identify yourself. There are a lot of pages. There are a lot of people that are going to, you know, just talk about ABCD, but then we've identified ourselves as, you know, this uh, platform where if people are going to look for... Uh, uh, for us, it's mostly about marketing, Yeah. Uh, if, if you have observed. So we have actually identified ourselves in that manner. So I have a team. I will not sit and brag and say, okay, I manage because I wake up in the morning, I go to the office and I go, I run, I go to this business. I'll be lying. But if you are going to be, um, if you are going to sit and be relaxed and say, okay, my business is doing okay, you are supposed to be a good manager. Okay. You should be able to plan. You should be able to train others to be able to do what you are able to do even when you are not around. So I have people that I work with. Sometimes I'll just see, um, I'm also growing 
my daughter, she's a little brand anyway. She, she's also making her own monies here and there. But I have people that manage her. Of course, I'll be there. I take the videos. I check what's happening. But I've got people that manage her. Even if people are going to call, they want business with her, I'll direct them to that person. If people are going to call, they want printing, they want their Chilanga Murilo t-shirts done, I'm going to give them a contact to someone that they can talk to. If people want to come to the saloon, I'll give them contacts on who they can see. If people want to see me as me and engage me as a person, I also have people that you can talk to. So for me, it has been a team. Identifying the right people that you can work with, you can't be everywhere. For my kids, on that one, I don't, I, I don't even compromise. I have to create time for my kids. That's the reason why even if I had a program and my child needed, you know, I'm going to be there. Though I missed my, I missed my son's birthday. I didn't go to his school because I You're was working. Money. I was working somewhere <laughs> out of town. Oh. But then if I was within, I was definitely going to make it. But it has really been about having the right people around me. I'll not take credit for everything that I am today because there's a lot of effort that different people are putting in. Sometimes I'll just, you know, say, oh, these people were paid. Okay, these people did A, B, C, D. People just, they'll just update me because I've put up a system on what is supposed to be done and what is not supposed to be done. If there's a complaint that's going to come, I have the right people that I'm going to call and say, okay, there's a complaint from this side. You are the person that's supposed to, you know, uh, take care of these issues. So I have the right people with me. I have the right team. You cannot be everywhere. Otherwise, you just collapse and you will not have time for yourself. The things that you know about running a business. Mm -hmm. I know, yeah, you said you did business studies. But mm -hmm. in school, the things you learn and the things you find on the ground, not They're the same. Two They're two things. different things. Yeah. So the things that you learned about running a business, where did you learn them from? Who did you engage? Like, just talk me through how did you learn to run businesses, grow businesses and expand businesses? Okay, so sometimes you might have all the knowledge, but you don't have the interest. So firstly, it has been about the interest. They say opportunities, opportunities have a tendency of finding people that are already moving. Yeah. So for me, I have the interest and I've had the right people. My brother is a street person, you know, I know there's the hustle from the streets. I've actually uh, found myself um, associated myself with people that I can learn things from. And um, I should even mention that a lot that I know now, a lot that I'm able to you know, the knowledge that I can share to another person, I didn't sit and learn it in class. But I learned it from the streets. I learned it from people that I associate myself with. And for me, it has been a plus. So if they're going to say, you know, bad uh, company corrupts good morals, even the, 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 if you have the good morals and you're not able to, you know, make use of them, apply them to where they're supposed to be applied, they're not, they're not even worth having. So for me, lessons have been from people around me. Lessons have been because I have shown the interest. Lessons have been because I have a vision for myself. There's where I want to be. And for me to get where I, I want to be, there should be a way on how I'm going to get there. I'm not rich and I'm not um, where I want to be, but at least I'm in a better space. You're in a better space. Yeah. And, and where do you see the Muzukanji brand going? Mm. Mm. My dreams scare me. They really do. But I want to be able to just sit and not step out and have my businesses provide for me in the near future. So I want to have independent businesses that are going to uh provide for me even without me stepping out to run around i really need to be that big person when i say big that person with the money that's what i want for myself and now you're getting ready for that because i want my kids not to lack anything that's me and how are you getting ready for that <laughs> well, I'm also in a process even me sitting here chatting with you who who knew that, you know, people just know this Suilanji, see I'm a guy, you know, you're a big brand. I didn't even imagine that one day I was going to sit and have a chat with you like this. For me, this is a plus and I'm really humbled. Such opportunities don't come every day. And um, I am preparing myself. I'm still studying. I'm still getting skills. 
for example, the cake business that I'm now talking about. Yeah. It was not going to come if I didn't show the interest to, to learn, to develop that skill. So if I see something, if I'm able to do it, you know, if I'm able to make myself better and prepare myself for that particular opportunity, I'm always available too. Yeah. Statistics say, actually, there's something that interested me too much. I had a conversation with uh, uh, this person from the cake market who told me uh, roughly there are 97,000 birthdays in Lusaka only. 97,000? In a month. In August. In August alone? Yes, in August alone. So 97,000 birthdays in Lusaka, if you're able to have just uh, even 100 or 50 cakes, that's quite good money because a cake is going to be like 750, 800, 1,000, 1, 2, depending on what they want. So if you can develop that skill, have that skill, and just be able to provide even 50 cakes from the 97,000, imagine how much money you can make, Okay. So for me, it was about the man. I was like, ah, 97,000, please <laughs> teach me. That's how, you know, I, I, I went on with it. And now we're in the process, everything is moving on slowly and smoothly. We've had a few orders here and there, but once we just, you know, hit the market officially, it's going to be something perfect for me. Great. Yeah. So now the other thing I wanted to find out is um, at the level where you are, you've reached a certain level now where you have to build character so that you're not easily moved by certain things that distract you. Because at any level, whether it's a kid in school, it's a graduate, it's a business person, there are things that will make you sometimes just, I don't want to go out there, maybe you feel defeated or you feel like there are certain things that are just distracting you. How now do you just crush through distractions? Because like you said, you want to reach a level where you've got money and you're not worried about your kids, whether they're going to eat or school fees. You can take them to any school you feel like because the money is not a problem, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. But there are those frustrations that, you know, try, try and get you off the goal, trying to distract you. How have you built character to not feel moved or shaken by small things? Okay, so coming from a point where I was very bullied, you know, I was bullied a lot of times. I started working on myself. Now, even if someone was to call me ugly, even if someone was to say I've got a big head, it's something that I know and something that I've embraced. I've worked on myself. That's one. Secondly, I don't respond. I don't involve myself to petty talk. If, if there's some, some gossip, some petty talk going on, I don't involve myself because I know the negative energy, I know what that can do to a brand. I know what that can do to a person who is trying to build themselves. I've got a lot of people that are just, you know, they're just watching and saying, okay, she's going to fail, she's going to do this, she's going to do that. So for me, even if somebody was going to come today and say, no, because there are certain words that I think I can't use because, you know, but then they're going to describe you in a certain way. I know that that's not the person that I am. And it's not, it's not going to benefit me. It's not going to give me anything if I go out there and start justifying myself. Yeah. So for me, I just sit. People that know me know the person that I am. People that know me know my story. People that know me know where I'm coming from. So sometimes you just joke and laugh about things. You never see me involve myself in things that don't benefit me, things that don't give me money. I want to argue about... Should I buy shares in this company? I want to argue about, okay, this business is not doing fine. What do I do? I want to argue about, okay, these workers are not performing well and how am I supposed to improve them? You know, those are things that I want to involve myself in. And I think over the years, I've really done my best to build myself. I've associated myself with um, people that have helped build me. I've associated myself with people that, um, you know, share the same dream as I I, I do. So even if I was going to sit and start talking about uh, 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 building a school in the near future, someone would not say, ah, I'm never boasting. You know, there are people that say, oh, yeah, you're able to do that. You know, it's possible if you do this, if you do that. So that's how I'm growing myself as a person. That's how I'm growing myself as a brand. That's how I'm growing myself as that entrepreneur. And that's how I'm just branding myself as a corporate person. Who's in your inner circle that 
is able to guide you. When you get stuck with the business, for example, it's not working out. Guys, we, this month we're not selling. Guys, oh, there's this problem. We've got this hiccup with the business. Oh, I thought it would go like this. It's not going according to plan. Who's in your inner circle? Who do you go to? Okay, I've got um, quite a number, but there's one person that has really taught me a lot when it comes to just how to stay calm when there's pressure, you know, how to handle situations. Okay, when the business is not going on well, what do you do? So this one is my boss, Mr. Mchindu, Mr. Jimmy Mchindu. So um, I'm so comfortable to talk about what is not working, what is not working. In the beginning, I didn't even see myself going into transport, but he was the person who was saying, I think, no, you know, you can get this. It's able to give you this much by the end of this, uh, this month. You are able to, you know, get so much money. You are able to pay this. So for me, he has really been, he has really been on me. Like he, he's a person who wants to see me grow. He's a person who wants to see me better. And um, he's a person who actually gave me a platform to prove what I'm able to do when it comes to marketing. So most of my growth, most of the problems that I have when it comes to business or what to do, what not to do, it's actually him that I get lessons from. He's actually the CEO of Jelum, Jelum Zambia. Yeah, I can tell from his name because you said his first name, I think starts with J-E, then he's, <laughs> there's M-U, so I'm trying to yes, figure out Jalumo, yes, the J yes. and the Lumo. I'm sure mm. there's maybe the wife L-U somewhere there or the somewhere son or there. kid or something. So, yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm a humble student of his and um, I've also had several talks with um, Dr. Siatwambo and uh, for him, he has actually been on me like you know he'll tell you okay i think you can do this you can try this these are challenges that you 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 face if you're going to go this route this is what i'm doing with my with my team this is what i'm doing with my people and for me those are lessons that i've been appreciating and i've got a lot of friends that are just doing businesses yeah most of the times we're just going to gossip i have this friend she's um she she's into makeup and all uh royalty hair and makeup for her most of the times when we just talk on phone she'll be explaining the challenges that she's faced how she's overcome and for me i appreciate such instead of just sitting and talking about people so the right company is going to build you in a direction that you want to see yourself in great yeah. and 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 you have a lot of followers like I, you put a lot of followers on your social media what do you think people like about you? What do you think draws them to you? Because look, if they didn't like you, they wouldn't follow you. Or they would have followed you and you had your issues and then they leave you. But you've got followers. They are seen in the engagement and they're always there. What is it about Mizukanji that you feel draws people to you? People have been part of my story. We have created that family. We've created that bond. There, sometimes when I sit, I, I look at... Um, a few comments from people. There are people that I've seen from, you know, 2018, 2019, 2020. They've been around. So people can easily relate to my story. People can easily, you know, they look at me, they, they, they know where we are coming from. They know what has been happening. They know how we have struggled. And they have been around to see uh, what we went through to be where we are. So I, I really appreciate people that have really, really, and some, they are paying attention because they, they promise themselves that, okay, it's going to fail at some point, and then, you yeah. know, because I had situations where um, sometimes you try to promote something that you're doing, you try to talk about a business, and people will be like, ah, no, she's just doing this for show off, you know, she wants to be seen, she wants to be noticed, she wants to be that, so they are, Followers are in a lot of categories, but what I appreciate most is that I am going to be around for the longest time and my story is going to be a story that someone can just, you know, they look at me, they see where I'm, I'm coming from. I've actually gained. I'm actually going to get out of here. I'm finished. August when the wind comes. I'm going to get out of here. You know? So people know where we're coming from. People know how much we struggled. People know how it was like when I just hit rock bottom because my story has been in public. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of people, they just, you know, some 
believe in God now, believe that God can do wonders. People now believe that, oh, God can actually do A, B, C, D if you are patient. God can change someone's situation. So some people use me as, as a testimony. Some people use me as a reference point. Some people just look at me and say, ah, no, no, what thing is. So there are a lot of people. But yeah. then the, the only thing that we need to do is know ourselves, know where we're going. You know, we have a game plan. And, you know, life is like a race when you are running. With you, they can tamanga with you. If they are too tired to tamanga with you, they remain behind and just sit and watch. But for me, my followers, we share the story. They understand where we're coming from. And I think they have an idea where we're going. Good. Yeah. What is your strongest quality? <sighs> I love myself. I believe in myself. I believe in myself. What I want, I will get. What I want, I will do. Okay? That's something that you cannot take away from me. So I think that's the strongest quality I have. I don't give up easily. I keep pushing. I feel I get up, I keep pushing. And, and looking at your businesses um, mm -hmm. and other parts of your life, when you look back, okay, like the businesses you've done and whatnot, what do you think you'd have done, you'd have done differently? Like what mistakes did you make in the past? that you would not want to repeat going in the future? Okay. Um, allowing a business be the only thing. Your business is going to pay rent. Your business is going to... The same business is going to pay rent. The same business is going to buy your fuel. The same business is going to buy your swag. That's something that, you know, it really drained me at some point. That's why you hear, no, business in Agua. You know, someone tried to do this, but then they failed because you tried to make, uh, you know, your business do everything for you. But for me, the lessons I got from that is it's very difficult for you to have, you know, one source of income and then just entirely depend on that. Diversify, look at opportunities, look at something else. In case this fails, what can you do? Yeah. So I, because I got my lessons from there, now I'm able to, I'm able to, you know, push myself, do better, look at opportunities and just grab different opportunities. I'll never allow one business uh, be the only source of income for me. Okay. And who do you look, who do you look up to? My mother. Okay. She's a very strong woman. You know, she's, she's got a fighting spirit. She's a person who never uh, gave up on us, never gave up on what she was doing. She's a go-getter. Is she also an entrepreneur? She yeah, too much. She's a nurse, but then she went about skills development. Eh? She went, she, now she's, she, she, she designs clothes during her free time when she's not working, you know. She's designing clothes and that's powerful for me. Interesting. She's a woman who is not only depending on her job. And, and where you are, the businesses you've gone through, everything that has happened to you, what would be the top five? I'm saying top five, I'll be counting. The top five advice you'd give to women, either single women, or married women, or business women. What would be the five things you'd want them to reflect on and this is Muizu Kanji advising women. Number one. <laughs> There's a lot that I can say, and I just don't know how to group them. When you say generally women, it becomes a bit tricky, but I will try anyway. One, you have to believe in yourself. Okay. Uh, keep the right company. Sometimes you might believe in yourself. You might want to do ABCD for yourself, but... If you are not keeping the right company, it's very difficult for you to be who you want to be. As you are believing in yourself and, uh, you know, keeping the right company, you also have to make yourself better. Have your own source of income. Okay? No matter how comfortable uh, you are, wherever you are, you have to be financially independent. When I say financially independent, you have to be willing to adapt and just grab opportunities, business opportunities. As they I've seen women that say, me, I can't do this. Okay? I, I, I can't sell. I can't, you know, the only thing I can do is work. 
And the third thing is life can handle you different situations, but whatever comes your way, always know that you have the power to change that situation. Not the next person, not anybody else, but you have the power to change that situation. It's all up to you. Can I go for either? <laughs> no. Yeah, Five, sure, is en- <laughs> Five is enough. Don't just give up on yourself. It's always about you. Don't give up on yourself. Thank you, Mr. Kanji. Thank you too. It was a good conversation. I've, I've learned a lot from you. I think I see you in a different light now. You're not just a social, what do you call it, a socialite? Just, you know, bagging big likes and big numbers on social media. There's actually a lot that uh, you can teach people. I look forward to seeing you as a speaker on some poster somewhere. I do some, <laughs> I, I do speak sometimes. And um, I'm really grateful that uh, Dr. Siatombo gave me a platform too. Uh, I have been talking to a few people from the background, but last week was just a while for me because you know I, I I was at the I was at the rehab, and uh, for the first time I was able to just share my story without being judged. I was able to share my story to people that you know were getting points, were people that I I I, I encouraged people, I, and I felt really good about myself. Just doing the right. Thing. That should have been on Friday, right? Yes. Yes, because I was with him. He told me, let me just go and introduce me to Kanji. I'll come back in the morning. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You're the one who stole him from me. Yeah. So, <laughs> because yeah, he was supposed was... to be there. And then he said, no, I'm going to, I'm going to sue me. So I was like, yeah. So um, I'm really grateful for people that are seeing uh, a better person uh, of me that I'm not. I, I didn't really believe that I was going to be a speaker at some point that I'll be able to sit down and just speak. But I'm really thankful to people that have seen that side of me. And um, I'm really grateful for the opportunities that have just been handed to me. Yeah, and there are more coming. Yes. There are more coming. There are more pending. Oh, right, thank you very much for, <laughs> for the conversation. Yeah. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, I've... I've, I've, I think I've learned a lot. Your top five makes sense even for me, though I'm not a woman, but it still makes sense. It's still relevant. Um, and it's something we to, to, to reflect on. And I hope that whoever is watching this obviously now sees a different Muzu Kanji in terms of we feel like we know you. We feel like we, mm-hmm. your struggle is, you know, resonates with who, you know, we are generally. The difference, I think, with most people is you go through all these struggles and you feel like you can deal with it on your own. Mm-hmm. You know, because that's how I feel like now the support system actually is important because no matter how strong you are there's just some things that you just need to hear a different perspective Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like just need a different voice and i also relate with you when you say surrounding yourself with the right people because there are some people you go to them with a business it can't work to them it's just not ah if yeah Mm. just go and save your money you know Mm. don't take an extra risks Mm. so for me i think that also is a point of you know resonation so thank you for your time with okanji thank you so much to you guys who are watching, uh, thank you so much for the time. Uh, and I hope that you've learned one or two things from today's conversation. We look forward to the conversation next week. And remember, please subscribe, please like, please share. And uh, let's spread the word on the podcast. Otherwise, thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your day.